The iPod Touch fourth generation was supported by Apple only up to iOS 6. Many were sad that they couldn't update to the flashy new iOS 7, but that was just kind of the way things were. Keyword being were. A method has been figured out to install iOS 7 onto the fourth gen iPod Touch. This is crazy, and if you want a more in-depth overview, I'll have a link to a video I did in the description. But in this video, I'm going to show you all how to do it. And honestly, it's not that difficult. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and let's go install iOS 7 on the iPod Touch 4th generation. <laughs> It's 1.42 a.m. right now, so that's fun. So maybe hit that like button for all my hard work here. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump into this. Or, well, actually, there is a little bit further to do here. Uh, let's go over some warnings before we actually, you know, go and mess with your device. While this is cool and all, you probably shouldn't do it. iOS 7 runs horribly on the iPod 4, and it is also extremely unstable and limiting. You have to boot while plugged into your computer, and from there, in my experience, you have around 10 minutes before the device will crash. Although recently, that's turned into into more like two minutes for me, so honestly I don't know what to think. You can't connect to the internet and therefore really can't do anything. This will erase all data from your iPod, so if you actually have stuff on there, don't do this. If you have a 16 gigabyte iPod, apparently this probably won't work. You can still try if you want to, just don't expect anything to happen. This here is an 8 gigabyte model, so I'm okay. Also, if you aren't at least somewhat experienced with doing this kind of thing, I'd recommend you take a pass. But at the end of the day, after all this being said, it's up to you. If you want to risk your device, that's totally your choice. I obviously have no liability here, this is all on you. Now, you are going to need a Mac for this. There might be a way to do this on Windows, but I was taught on Mac, and I don't really know how to do this on Windows, so we're just going to do it on Mac. If you can figure it out, great. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, it's just the way it is. All credit for this goes to at Ralph0045 on Twitter, and you should totally go follow this guy. He's brilliant, way smarter than me. I barely know anything about this, to be honest. I'm just following instructions. And with that all said, uh, let's actually get going here. Ralph was kind enough to give us the custom IPSW he made, so we won't have to mod it ourselves. So what you're going to have to do is download the zip file found in the description. This is hosted by me, although it was originally provided by Ralph. I have changed uh, what he gave me a little bit just to make life a little easier. I uh, added some more in-depth instructions and the written guide in there, and I also changed a couple folder names. That's pretty much all I did. If this video isn't clear enough, uh, there is a written guide in there. It is in a .md format, so if you can't read that, if your computer's like, what do I do? Just read name it and uh, delete MD and type in TXT. This will change it to a text file format. MD is something like Xcode will use. And then you should be able to open it no problem. Now if the download link for some reason gets taken down, hit me up on Twitter and I'll update it. So now that that's downloaded, I would say unzip it to your desktop. That's just what I'll be doing. So now let's go grab your iPod. You're going to want to put it into DFU mode. If you don't know what this is, that means you're severely inexperienced, like even more so than me, inexperienced, and perhaps you shouldn't be doing this. But if you want to learn, Google it. I'm not going to show you guys how to put it into DFU mode. I'm sorry. My thing has a broken power button, so it's like a completely different process for me. It's a huge pain to do over and over again. Essentially, you have to use Red Snow, and it's complicated. Just look it up on Google. It's pretty simple, and there's tons of tutorials out there. Once you're in DFU mode, we're going to need to put it into something called Pwned DFU mode. Yeah, Pwned. You remember that? Okay. Anyway, essentially, this is still like a recovery DFU mode, but it allows you to mess around with the device just a little bit more. Now, uh, make sure your iPod is plugged into your Mac. Uh, when you do this, you should get something pop up saying that iTunes discovered an iPod in recovery mode. Just click OK. Doesn't really matter. Now you're going to want to open up your terminal. Okay, now that you're in terminal, you're going to want to type in CD space desktop, assuming that you put your folder on the desktop. CD is essentially a command that lets you maneuver through your files to the terminal. So go ahead and do that. Then you're going to want to go CD custom 7 IPSW. From there, you're going to want to type in CD iPhone DFU dash master. Now, at this point, we've maneuvered to the correct folder, and we should be able to put our iPod into Pwn DFU mode. So now you're going to want to put in the following command, dot slash IPWNDFU space dash P semicolon. Now you'll know this is successful when it says device is now in Pwn DFU mode. At this point, what we're going to do is restore the iPod to the custom iOS 7 firmware. So go to iTunes, hold Alt or Option, depending on your keyboard, and click Restore iPod. IPod. Then you're going to want to go to your desktop, custom 7 IPSW, and choose iPod 4, 1, 7.0. 
hit open, and now it's going to restore. Now this process will take a few minutes. You should at first get the iOS 6 logo, and then the iFaith logo, if you know what iFaith is, and it'll just go from there. Just let it do its thing, and you'll know when it's finished because it'll be back in DFU mode. If your computer doesn't recognize it, just unplug it, plug it back in, and it should be in DFU mode. Okay, so now that we're back to the computer, we're gonna set up a simple server to help us with uh, restoring the phone when we try to boot. Now, I don't actually understand what this does, but it is necessary. So you're gonna wanna type in CD desktop, CD custom seven IPSW, and then CD keys server. Now from here, what you're gonna wanna type is SUDO space Python space dash M space simple HTTP server space 80 semicolon. And again, this is just gonna set up a little server for us. Now you do need admin privileges for this, so it's gonna ask you for your password. As you can see here, this is what it'll look like once it goes through. It's gonna say serving HTTP on 0.0.0.0 port 80. So now that that's done, we're gonna open up the same terminal window that we used before and put the device into Pwn DFU mode again. So you guys know how to do that. I'm not gonna show that, it's pretty simple. Now we're gonna open up another terminal window. So at this point, there should be three terminal windows open. So we're gonna go CD desktop, CD custom 7 IPSW, CD future restore, and then we're going to put in the following command. Now this is in the written guide, so it might just be easier to go from there, but essentially you want to go dot slash future restore, use pwn dfu, yes there's some dashes in there, just use the written guide, just boot equals dash v, and make sure you have the quotation marks there. What that does is that makes all the uh, lines of code pop up on the screen when we boot, which is cool. So now what we need is the iOS 6 firmware path. Go to it, right click it, and then click get info. Highlight everything under where and copy it. Now paste it right beside the other command. Now you're going to want to go back to the IPSW and you're going to want to copy the file name. From there you're going to want to paste it in beside the file path and add another slash between custom 7 IPSW and the file name. Now you can hit enter and that's when everything will happen. And then if you look at your iPod, it's going to be black, it's going to be thinking, and then it's going to flash green and if it flashes green. That means you're on the right track. So at this point, it's actually booting. It's going to go through some lines of code for a while. Uh, just kind of let it do its thing. The first time it does take a bit. Eventually you should see the Apple logo and a loading bar. Now for me, what always happens on the very first boot is we crash. This has happened twice, you know, the two times that I've installed this. So if that happens to you, that's normal. So what we're going to do, is reboot again. So once it crashes, you're going to want to go back to your computer, put it into pwned DFU mode yet again, then go back to the future restore terminal window, which is the one we did that made everything happen. And we're going to do that again, same command. So you can just copy and paste it pretty simple. And once we do that, it's going to actually boot up and this will be a lot faster this time. It's essentially just turning it on. And from there, you just have to wait and it should boot into iOS 7. And there you go. <laughs> That's it pretty much. Um, this is a common complicated process. If you didn't get it, go back, uh, watch a little. The written guide is very helpful. Hopefully that'll let you get it. Um, everything's working for me. I mean, as far as uh, what does work anyway. You might be wondering why there's a phone app. That's because this is actually a modded iPhone 4 IPSW because there is no iPod 4 IPSW, at least not in the public's hands. So uh, yeah, that's that. Hopefully this helped you. Hopefully you were able to get it. If you did, let me know in the comments. Uh, if not, you can always uh, get me on Twitter. I usually answer people there pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Maybe hit that like button if this helped you out or you found it interesting because this took me a really long time. It's 3 a.m. right now, so if I sound really tired, that's why. Maybe subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. I'd like to do some more of this stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time. I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not. Who am I kidding? I'm going to edit the video, then go to bed. Yeah.